Welcome to ComSpark. Today we are here in Cincinnati, Ohio. My name is Brian Hogan. I'm with Affidence and I will be your guest host. We are here today with Dr. Hazim Saeed, Director at the School of Information Technology at University of Cincinnati. Dr. Saeed is a graduate of Cairo University, earned his PhD from University of Cincinnati, and also received his Project Management Professional Certification from the Project Management Institute. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Dr. Saeed. Um, so you're at University of Cincinnati, so talk to us a little bit how your organization is really addressing the gap in talent. So I joined the University of Cincinnati um, in information technology, and we were one of the we were the first to program in information technology in Ohio, and we were one of the first ten in the nation. Um, and we grew the program from an undergraduate to master to PhD. Uh, over the last seven or eight years, we started to hear from the industry about the talent issue. Um, so the problem is the industry cannot find enough talent to address their technology transformation initiatives and help them uh, stay on, on top with respect to technology initiatives. And if they find the talent, sometimes they are not at the right level of skills and there's not enough diversity of those talents. Mm. Uh, it took us a while, but we decided to take on that challenge and that problem of uh, transforming our region and our state and hopefully the nation from a talent deficit to talent surplus. Uh, we think that the presence of highly qualified talent pipeline can transform the economic development of our region, and that's what we were set out to do. Wow, that's great. So are, are you guys doing that on your own? Or are you just adding new programs within UC? Or are you partnering with schools? How does that look? This is a very good question, and it took some uh, self-reflection uh, on our part as a university to question the way we bring in students and the way we prepare them and the way we connect to the community. I have to give credit to the university leadership that allowed us to think out of the box and challenge some of the status quo. One of the big problems we have in the university, or in universities in general, is what we call college access. By that I mean um, we want to make sure that people who come to the university are prepared. But in the quest to measure that level of preparedness, we created barriers that prevents people who might very well be contributing members of our society, great uh, uh, technologists, from coming through that uh, barrier. So we started to re-examine that barrier that's called college, the college readiness question, or what, what can we do to measure somebody's readiness to, act, to, to come to college. The next big problem we have in universities in general is cost. Cost is very high. And it is left up to the student to figure it out. There's no private public partnerships that can help bring that cost down. The third thing is there's a big gap between the industry and the university. Industry do not have deep influence on the educational process. And there's, uh, in general, it's a, a sequential relationship. University comes first. And then after the student is done with the university, then they go to the industry. So we started to think about how can we change that dynamics. Mm. So we came up with this initiative that I refer to as early IT. And we realized we have to, for this to come, we need to create what I call equal partnerships between everybody in that pipeline. So we started with the K-12 districts, the community colleges, the university, and the industry. And we came together to create that, um, uh, to manage that initiative in, in an equal partnerships. Um, and um, so we're not alone, we cannot do it alone. And that's something, it's humbling, uh, it requires college, it requires courage, uh, and uh, we at the university, um, and I think the leadership there, uh, and I think uh, our current president has an initiative called uh, Boldly Cincinnati. And I, I, I don't think there's anything can be bolder than challenging our college access, affordability, and relationship with the industry. 
Well, that's great. So you've got so in, so industry is feeding into this into this yeah. plan to to uh, make sure that uh, yeah. they're speaking into the needs that they have, so yeah. that these students who come out of this program, yeah. they have great opportunities uh, for jobs. Um, and you're also getting the K through 12 yeah. uh, institutions involved as well as community yeah. colleges. Yeah. That's great. What what kind of um, success have you had so far in getting this? Up and going. Uh, but actually, we've 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 have found um, great reception to the program. We have twenty school districts wow. that are partnering with us uh, throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, we are expected to add several more this this quarter. Uh, we have several community colleges that are partnering with us, and uh, we have over two hundred uh, businesses that partner with us to hire students. So one one of the things I want to emphasize here is. In this initiative, uh, usually when people make initiative, they either add something new to the existing systems or, um, and, and that becomes a problem in, in sustainability. For instance, some people ask me, how is the industry involved? Are they giving scholarships? Are they um, uh, giving money? If we go that route, it's not going to be sustainable because what a company, uh, we have to get into the company's current operation. So their current operation is to hire. So when they hire an individual, they pay the money. So how can we get that money and, and bring it into the mix of the college education and costs? So the model we have at the University of Cincinnati is called co-op. And the co-op model uh, was invented at the University of Cincinnati. And it basically sends the students to a company for a semester. And then the student comes back to the university for a semester, and they keep rotating that through their educational process. So what we decided to do, uh, and, and through this process, the students earn money from the, the company. So that's how the, the money from the private partnership flows. We decided to take advantage of this, but start it early. Hmm. So at this time, students go through high schools and they spend four years in high school. Then they have a barrier hmm. to come to the university. And in the university, they spend about five years to get the undergraduate degree and they do the co-op. So we decided to take the first year of the university and put it in the high school. And the high school will deliver that first year. And any student who successfully complete that first year, they will be automatically admitted to the university. Wow. That pulls the co-op one year early. Wow. So now students, once they finish high school, they are eligible to start the co-op. So the company then get access to that talent right after they leave high school. But this is not a talent that is not prepared. This is a talent that finished the first year of the IT program. So this is a talent that has the same skill set as the co-op that is currently being hired. And we're using the same co-op mechanism. So companies that want to be part of this, they just need to implement the co-op mechanism, which is already well defined. We're not building new bureaucracy. It's already well right. defined within the company. We're just starting it earlier and part bringing the, the K-12 districts so that we increase the level of talent uh, that, that we have. And that money coming to the student, by them coming early, there is a potential for a student to choose. And we, at this time, it's a, a choice for the student. Once they finish high school, they can uh, start co-op in the summer right after high school. Mm -hmm. this, this did something fantastic on the question of college affordability. Before this initiative, a student has to finish high school, have to figure out the cost of a full year of college then come to the university, spend the full year, pay that full year, then they go out on co-op and they receive some income from the co-op, which if the student is conscious, they can pay back the cost and they can, over time, they could graduate debt free. But what we did is we moved the first year into high school, so there's no cost for the first year. Wow. So that's a 20% cost reduction. Then by moving the co-op early, the student can then start co-op first, meaning they earn the bail check before, before they, they receive. Before they for their next year of school. So we yeah. swapped the order. And instead of you receiving the bill, then the bail check, you receive the bail check, then you receive the bill. And that's how the private partnership can come in through a mechanism of employment 
of the student and help the student pay for college. It reduces the college time, which reduces the overall college cost, brings that engagement with the industry, which is not just employment, which is not just the company paying the student, but the student is working for the company. So they're gaining the skills, the learning company culture, the company is doing what we call for co-op, it's a long-term interview yeah. uh, with the students in, in, in a safe environment. At the same time, one of the impacts that happen and when we start to think about information technology, a lot of time when people think of information technology, they think engineering, they think calculus, they think physics. But we realize that information technology is a hands-on discipline. When you want in, a person in information technology, you don't ask them about calculus problems. You ask him, can you do that technology? Are they fast enough? In an essence, it's more like basketball or football or music. In, in basketball, the first time you go to a basketball uh, training, they give you the ball and say, go home and keep dribbling. Everybody maybe remembers right. that. And what, what that exercise does, it, it builds muscle memory that your hand becomes familiar with the ball and you don't need to process that mentally. That's what we need to do with technology. So, but the current problem we have is we don't introduce the path to technology in college. So if using the basketball metaphor, we're producing the high school freshman team and sending them to represent us in the NBA. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be crushed. Yeah. They, they, they don't have a chance of winning. And that's what we're doing with our current pipeline in terms of global competitiveness. What we need to do, we need to get, like MBA does, you start early, you have your high school freshman, you have, which is a level of a skill, your high school varsity, another level of a skill, you have your college team, that's a, another level of a skill, then you have your professional. The difference between IT and the MBA, you have about 600, 700 players in the MBA, you need about a million or two people right. in IT. So and that's, growing. And, and growing, yeah. as I said. So we're, we're taking a first step in that direction, exposing the students early to technology, bringing the company in, removing the barrier, engaging into uh, the private public partnership through co-op to pay for it. And the hope is that we're able to increase the quantity, the quality, and the diversity of the IT talent pipeline. If we successfully build that uh, partnership and collaboration in our region, our region will become very quickly a talent producer region. And I think everybody in the technology field realize if we have a region that, is, that produces talent, quickly business will come here and it will drive the economic development and, and that's where we're heading. Absolutely. Yeah, so the programs really remove barriers yes. and r lowered costs, yeah. you know, I integrated industry. So yeah. now uh, so now they are really speaking to it and giving students a much greater chance for success. Yes. So it's an amazing program. And, and we're hearing from students uh, something I personally did not consider early on in this program. Uh, which is it eliminates the stress mm -hmm. of uh, that that is imposed on the students and parents in the second and th uh, uh, in the last two years of high school. Uh, we find a lot of students who say uh, how who speak to the the, the level of uh, ease uh, and comfort they've become just knowing the guaranteed admission to the university. Wow! Um, and and that also helps them focus. We're basically telling them. We don't need you to be stressed about bureaucracy. We want you to focus on gaining the skills. That's what we as a society needs from our young people, to focus on learning the skills. It's our responsibility to remove the bureaucracy or to make the bureaucracy work for them, not against them. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much for your time and insights today, Dr. Saeed. And thank you so much to our listeners. To learn more about ComSpark, go to comspark.tech. This is Brian Hogan. Have a great day.